What's up, Riverside? We are back with another Ian and episode for this week. In this episode, we will be covering sports, the final part of Gainesville history, and more. Catch us some more on ENN. Oh, tell me Cadet Lee interviewed former battalion commander and current Air Force Academy cadet Hamilton about life at the famous academy. Over to you, Lee. I was Hamilton. I graduated from Riverside with the class of 2022. I'm from Covington, Georgia, and now I am currently a sophomore at the United States Air Force Academy. Well, the Air Force Academy and Riverside are pretty similar, more than most would expect. While cadets are treated more maturely and have different freedoms, military academies don't differ much. We still have to march to lunch um, instead of every day. We do it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, there's still reveille. There's still taps. Cadets still have leadership roles. And, I mean, our hierarchies are different. Um, here we have a wing level, a group level, a squadron level. But those still translate um, well back to how it went to Riverside with the battalion and the um, company level. And so, ultimately, I would say that Riverside prepared me by having a lot of opportunities for me to grow and develop as a leader. Um, I would say that if I didn't get that experience away from home at first, then attending another boarding school would have been very, very difficult. So I would say that making the most out of my experience with Riverside and embracing every aspect of cadet life there has really set me up well to deal with a lot of the stressors here at the Academy. To the cadets, I think about my time at Riverside every day. I mean, it's kind of like my Roman Empire, if you will. And it's changed my life better, more for the better than for the worse. Um, all that I have to say, Riverside might seem like one of the worst places when you're going through it, but buying in and putting effort into being there will make the experience exponentially worth more. I know that a lot has changed since I've graduated. Um, a lot of the structure, of course, the name, a lot of the uh, faculty and staff have changed, but I still believe that Riverside has a lot to offer. and. As one of my favorite teachers from Riverside used to say, nothing worth doing comes easy, and I fully believe that. Cadet Young took the time to meet up with Mr. Rob Parker in the admissions department to talk about how parents can visit the academy. Off to you, Young. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Thanks. Um, I just wanted to ask you some questions about visiting day. Absolutely. Uh, if parents want to visit Riverside, who do they contact? So anybody who'd like to visit the Academy would want to reach out to the Office of Admissions. Um, you could do so by visiting the website at riversideprep.org and go to the Admissions tab and all the contact uh, information is right there on the website, readily available. Where do new visitors find applications to the Riverside Preparatory Academy? Um, once again, it is under that Admissions tab. Um, we have a very simple application process for families um, and we have many different admissions counselors in the office that are all speaking the same language and we are all here to try to simplify that process uh, to make it as simple and as easy for a family as possible to work through that enrollment process on their kid. How long will it take to get a response back from the school? Um, responses are very quick. Um, you know, we, we do have a 24-hour policy that if a family reaches out, we do want to reach back out to them within 24 hours. But on new inquiries, um, as long as it's done, you know, Monday through Friday during traditional business hours, normally that, that, first, uh, that first point of contact will come within a matter of two to four hours. If parents need to switch the visiting day, are they allowed to reschedule? hundred percent. We, we completely understand that life happens. Um, you know, especially when you're dealing with, with kids and schedules and work. Um, so we are very flexible within the Office of Admissions to, you know, cater and tailor to the needs of a family um, when they want to come visit the Academy. How long is the tour for the parents? Tours last anywhere between an hour and an hour and a half. Um, a lot of it depends on what faculty members we might run into um, on the tour. And then sometimes, you know, families ask more in-depth questions or want to see things that are a little off the normal tour path. So when that happens, you know, we do want to build extra time into it. Um, and then as long as it's a good sunny day, we do try to schedule our tour so that every tour ends with pass and review. On the tour, how much of the school did they get to see? Um, we showed them everything at the, uh, at the academy. Uh, we want to make sure that they get to, you know, the highlights, of course. We want to see the dining hall. 
Um, you know, food is always important. We want to make sure we see living accommodations. What are the most, you know, important things to a family? Where will my kid live? Where will my kid eat? And where will my kid be educated? Um, also, some families are really interested in seeing our athletic facilities, so we want to showcase what we have um, and what they get to see. Well, thank you for answering our questions, and thank you for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Young. Now I will hand it over to Cadet Lambert with sports for this episode. Last week, the Riverside basketball team faced against Lakeview. After a tough match, the Riverside Eagles did not find victory with a score of 82-31 loss. This past Tuesday, the varsity team won against Loganville, still looking for their second victory, and it was not found. The JV team is still in good shape as they stand with a 5-5 five five record season. This Thursday, the JV and Varsity Eagles are going to play their last season match against Marinetta Christian Academy. If you're around the area, make sure to show up and give them their support. In state championship after 19 years of not being able to host one. Our wrestling team had a good matchup. Sadly, most of them lost in the first round. Cadet Adrian Roberts placed six in his weight class division. Congratulations to him and all the other cadets who fought hard to be in this state competition. The drill team had a competition this last week. The boys did pretty good and they continue to win more and more. This Saturday they have another competition, so make sure to show up and give them your support. With the winter ending, the spring sports have started to train. Soccer and baseball have been working hard to have a good start of the season. Our soccer team had its first scrimmage for the JV team, but they did not find their victory. Meanwhile, our soccer varsity has another scrimmage this Thursday. The baseball team had its, has its first game on the 26th of February against Pebble Rook, so make sure you show up. That's all for your sports. Back to you, Gia. Don't forget, Monday the 12th, classes will be starting late for cadets who stayed home to watch the Super Bowl. We will be having early signouts for the President's Day break starting on Friday the 16th. Signouts will start at the West Portal at 1 p.m. Cadets will return back to campus on Tuesday the 20th. Class will resume on Wednesday. The Riverside team had a head-to-head -head match against North Forsyth two days ago here at Riverside. Riverside was able to defeat a tough North Forsyth team with a 52-point victory. Kalia Newkirk, as a fill-in, led all shooters and earned an expert badge. Grant Eman was the second-highest placed shooter. Daisy Newkirk rounded out our top three shooters and had the highest kneeling score. Jude Kalazzi was our fourth-highest shooter with his personal best score. Cadet Mendoza has the next chapter of History of Gainesville and Riverside. The attack on Pearl Harbor was not the only place Japan attacked. They also began to target China along with other European colonies in the South China Sea to finally secure their sphere of influence. And the ball was in America's court. Well, the entire school basically mobilized to serve the war effort. A program developed where cadets who graduated would spend another year receiving officer candidate training essentially, and many of them were in fact sent off to the Pacific. But unlike Paris, the army wasn't effective in this theater is where America's Navy came in. But their battleships were destroyed at Pearl Harbor. And I got two words for you. Aircraft, carriers. And America was thirsting for revenge against Japan. So Commander Doolittle had a plan. Sail thousands of miles to Japan, take off an army planes to bomb Japan, and escape to free China. But the carrier group was discovered by a small Japanese vessel. And it was only a matter of time before the Japanese knew. So they had to take off now, or else the plan would fail. But Doolittle, surely we can't fly thousands of miles into Japanese airspace undetected while being the first people to strike Japan while completely avoiding their air defenses all throughout the Pacific while we try to get to free China, Doolittle. Doolittle. The people of Japan had no idea the threat posed by the United States, but after this raid, it forever cemented the U.S. as their main rival in the Pacific theater. Cadets in the Pacific were fighting the Empire of Japan. Uh, who were sta stationed on a number of islands, almost none of which were known to Americans uh, before we got involved with World War II. Whereas in Europe, you know, people are in Paris and going to Berlin and places like that that Americans are familiar with. The war in the Pacific was essentially alien to the American people. The U.S. had begun taking islands throughout the Pacific, pushing the Japanese back. And Okinawa was the first island to fall in the Japanese archipelago. The Americans fought a war of attrition once the United States was able to essentially prevent these islands from being reinforced and resupplied. It was simply a matter of horrible time until the Japanese forces were ground down and destroyed, generally to the last man. 
But as the war dragged on, the U.S. began to look for ways to end it before the popular opinion turned against it. So they loaded up an experimental superweapon and dropped it on Hiroshima. But the nuking of Hiroshima only made Japan resist more. So they decided to drop another nuclear weapon on Nagasaki. After that, they were done. Two cities were vaporized, and morale was below the floor. So finally, they surrendered on September 9, 1945. But soon, the U.S. wouldn't be the only one with technology like this. Thank you, Mendoza. Now, Leo Zhang has a feature on Chief Bill O'Brien about the security team here at Riverside. For safety and security director Mr. Bill O'Brien, no two days are quite the same in his role upholding safety here at Riverside. Well, that's the unique part of my position. There is no same day every day. I may have meetings planned out and a whole agenda of what I'm going to accomplish or, or task that I have to take care of for a particular day. Bill stay often get unexpectedly disrupted. Carefully planned meetings were abruptly rescheduled as conflicts with cadets or faculty arose and needed his mediation. But Bill relishes responding to issues and putting student well-being first. My, my agenda stops and I have to go address whatever that issue or, or situation is. So I, I don't have a normal day. Uh, and again, that's what I like about this position is it's not sitting in an office day to day from nine in the morning till five in the evening. Uh, it's changing constantly. Bill had yet to envision a career in school security. After 30 years as a police officer, retirement left him restless. He took a chance when a job opened at Riverside four years back. I saw an opportunity here at Riverside Military Academy, so uh, I applied for that position, uh, interviewed with the president and vice president, and uh, four and a half years later, uh, here I am. While well, days deliver surprises, Brio's fondest memories come from nurturing cadets grows daily. Watching awkward middle schoolers evolve into responsible young men brings deep rewards. That's very memorable to watch them grow and then move on to the next chapter of life. Beyond everyday interactions, Bill also cherishes attending the boys' sports games and cheering them on. He sees himself as a father figure for cadets away from home. To me, that's one of the most rewarding benefits of this job. Uh, I'll, I'll see cadets, they'll tell me they got a baseball game or a soccer game, and the next morning, when they come in, they want to share that they won a game or scored a goal or hit a home run uh, to see them excited uh, and, and being part of that for them. Uh, and I've actually had different cadets tell me, hey, I got a baseball game tonight. I'd love it if you come watch. And I'll show up to, to support that young man. Uh, it's, it's difficult because we've got so many boys that are from all over the country and all over the world. They don't have that support mechanism. Uh, so I think that's a true part of what Riverside needs to be and is, uh, is the faculty and staff supporting the young men here. While well, school violence concerns Bill, preparedness gives him faith. He aspires to maintain Riverside as a sanctuary where cadets can learn free from anxiety under his protective wing. Unfortunately, we're in an environment uh, in, in our communities and our world where violence is prominent right now. No matter the unpredictable days, Bill stands ready to nurture cadets forward with wisdom and compassion. And seeing their growth brings him a purpose in return. That is all for today's episode. This is Whitehall, signing out.